In this video, we're gonna talk about the main way that you light your scene inside Substance 3D Stager, and that is image-based lighting, or IBL. So it's easier to show you than it is to talk about it, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into our scene here with our headphones, and I'm going to go ahead and scale this down, just throw in a sphere here with a little bit of metalness on it, and you can go ahead and you can already see that there is some sort of something being reflected in this object. We're going to now turn the roughness on the material of that, of that metal so you can see it in its entirety. So it appears that it is a photo studio, right? And uh, what's happening here is you'll notice that the shadow on the ground is falling in the opposite direction as that bright spot. That is because Stager is utilizing something called image-based lighting. So. This image is the default image and default lighting that exists inside of Stager. This image was shot with a 360 degree camera inside a photo studio. And what Stager is doing is it is understanding that this bright part of the image is a light source and therefore will treat it as a light source and cast a shadow in the opposite direction. The darker areas over here are creating some of the darker regions there. Basically, the image is saying that there's no lights over there and therefore Stager is saying, okay, then we won't have anything illuminated from there. One basic interaction with this, which, you'll, which I do all the time, is what I'm doing right now. I am holding down the shift key and clicking the right mouse button on my mouse. And then if I just go right and left, you can see that I'm rotating this light rib around this image-based lighting setup around the scene. Now I can also do this in um, the UI as well. So inside of our environment tab, you may have seen this at the top of our scene graph. This environment has had some uh, environmental controls. There are things like the ground. So I can either turn on or off a ground plane. You can see it's turning on and off the shadow. I can mess with that shadow opacity if I want. Additionally, there's a background filter here where I can uh, show or not show the background. I'll do that here in just a second. Actually, no, I'll do it right now. So we'll go ahead and turn on the opacity of the background and turn off the blur. And now what we can see is that background environment in there. So when I rotate this around, you can actually see it rotating back there too. Uh, in terms of rotating it, I can go into the lights and then I can also slide the rotation this way if I'd like. You can also colorize it here as well if I wanted to add some more redness or things like that in there. Also the intensity if you want to make it brighter or duller. Now, you are not, oh, 100. You are not limited to, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the opacity on this background just so I find it a little bit distracting. Uh, you are not limited by what is there by default. You can go up here, we've done models, we filtered by materials. Now we're going to filter by lights and we're going to scroll down here to our environment lights. And so we have all of these base ones to choose from inside of Stager. Um, you can just simply drag. If you want to try something new, you can simply drag and drop it into the scene and it immediately updates. I'll go ahead and back out a little bit so we can see our, our um, headphones as well. And so as I rotate this around, I'm going to turn on our ray tracer too. You know, as we rotate this around, you can see the lighting take hold. So you can do, you know, we've got a bunch of, of uh, default studio ones that you can mess around with. I really like this um, Tomoko, I believe it's how it's pronounced. It's a, uh, it's got a little bit of color to the lights, which is nice. Uh, it's not always great when you're designing a product, but when you're kind of showcasing it, it's nice to have a little bit of that real world lighting setting. Uh, you can also go into some real world environments like this panorama map is really nice. And you can see that it is uh, not only affecting the lighting, but it's reflecting the reflection. It's affecting the reflections as well. Um, so that's that's very cool in there. You can also there are plenty of websites where you can download. You can search for HDRI maps, which are the same thing uh, as this image based lighting. Uh, the HDRIs are the images that get mapped in there. So there's a place called like HDRI Haven. Uh, I think it's called Texture Haven now, that's really great. We also have these in our 3D asset library, in the, in the Substance asset library as well. You can download there from, or you can actually take your own if you uh, have a, a photo system to do that. And then you would just need to import those in just like anything else. But this image-based lighting setup is a main way that, I'm, uh, that you generate the majority of your lighting in the scene. 
Uh, for me, it's what I, you know, I lit out the animated films for over a decade. Uh, this is a very cool setup. It's very straightforward. It's the easiest way I've ever seen to light a scene um, and get most people the, the types of results that they want. Uh, in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna showcase uh, two other ways of lighting up your scene, and that is these physical lights and the environment stages.